episode are we on right now? We are live, first time, 2023. Yeah, that's right. Wow. New year. It's only February 7th. Now. Yes, Eric comes back nice and tan, huh. ready to go, crush this year. Beautiful, lots of news that has been going on. A lot of updating news. And welcome to the counter offer, which essentially takes the news and actually reads the news and interprets the news instead of just headlining the news. So I'll start. Go for I'll it. I'll start. You just read those headlines. I'll just read those headlines. So this has been going on for the last three years as brokerages had a boom, 2020, 2021, 2022. And guess what they did? They expanded. They brought on more agents. They expanded their brick and mortar. They brought on more assistants. And now they're downsizing. And what the topic of conversation now is, are brick and mortar brokerage offices going the way of nope, no more? Are they going to close them? Are brokerages looking to cut costs by shuttering offices? Agents contemplate what this means for their business. Agents contemplate what they mean. 36% by NAR, National Association of Realtors, said that no dedicated office is available to them. 36%. Okay. Really? I'm an office guy. That means one third of all agents, and I can see this, there's a lot of companies out there that are just saying, hey, listen, it's kind of a bullpen style. Who's ever there gets it. Who's ever not there doesn't get it. Uh, you have a lot of virtual, only virtual, and they're pushing towards that. To be honest, I can't see a high functioning team remote. That's just an opinion, but that's my opinion. What are your thoughts going completely virtual, brick and mortar, obviously probably the biggest expense okay. by far. Yeah, definitely the biggest expense. Guarantee you that, have an opinion about That is this. a great point, <laughs> and I do have a couple opinions. Uh, one was that it's pretty interesting to think that everybody wants to work remote. Yeah. So I would say that a lot of those agents- why wouldn't agents, they? Because it's easier. They That's don't have true. any accountability. They I don't mean, have the people, manager. Some people only look for remote work. Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, real estate agent, a lot of times they find the office to be use, useless. Yeah. And especially if there's an office environment where nobody's going to be there. So, you know, the value of the office, the flexibility and this and that, I'm not surprised that the number is so high, although that does sound extremely high. Uh, I would say that, you know, brokerages don't want to have to have have the expense and exp is only don't. remote and that's big amount of agents right there but at the same time i would say i like those brick and mortar retail yeah. places because uh even in new york but you know going on vacation and everything when i pass by the brokerages i love to look at those listings yeah i like to see the listings that yep. are online it usually uh, i mean i'm not a buyer yeah so, <laughs> you're, so here you're I not am, the right person here i am sitting there yeah. you know looking at what's Reading. available and stuff exactly. but it really goes to show i mean it, you know there's a lot of exposure to yeah. that so yeah i guess you have to find like the uh medium on the value there so the exposure is the brokerage the accountability is the brokerage to the agent. And the problem that I have is that if agents are not attending meetings, if agents are not coming into the office, if agents are not competing against each other, I can't, I can't see a high functioning brokerage or team if they're not consistently meeting to get trained, accountability, script practice, all these things. And it hurts eventually the consumer because the agent isn't getting better. They're just remaining the same and they're doing the least amount of work for just staying at home. I'm worthless at home. I can't, I can't do remote work. I need to be in an office away from my personal, otherwise I start like vacuuming, doing the dishes and like, I, I, can't, I can't do remote work. Some people prefer it, not me. Well, think about that. I mean, not to... As an agent, it's different. Yeah. If I was like a coder for a website, well, or like marketing or it's support. interesting because the agent you know our schedules are so sporadic and this and that so it does come up at with least that the excuse morning. that maybe yeah. like you know okay i have a little downtime i can run out and drop off my laundry or do a couple of those things yeah. that like Personal. are in the middle of the day so it does drop become the kids kind off. of like wishy-washy yeah but that's where i do agree that if you're ever in, in a business like brokerages or in any business you're going to want to if you want to grow you're going to do it best in an office, you know. At scary. BPI, it's only brick and mortar and only coming into the office every single day. Yeah. I'm not doing remote. <laughs> I don't think you will be. 
I was going to read one article, but this one is more relevant to that. Oh, so we're skipping nine billion plunge in New York City commercial real estate sets up brutal political fight over a shrinking tax pie. Oh, nine yeah. billion shortfall. Yeah, in taxes. Well, basically because there's so many. Yeah, the real estate market has gone down so much. Uh, the tax pie is getting smaller. How they're going to divvy that up and where the money goes. Yep. You know, it is very important that these retail stores, as well as uh, hotels, hotels. Yep. Did you hotels hear that the Eastside Marriott purchased in uh, 2015 for 260 mil, something like that, just sold for 150. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, it is very interesting. Uh, that just know. wasn't run well then. Because, yeah. like, you should at least get your money oh, back. It, it, you can read the story. It was never run well. Uh, okay. Lots of debt, just terrible place. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Midtown, York, you're fine. New York City has a lot to deal with, and it's not me who has to deal with it. It's yeah. the uh, government, and they have to f divvy up the taxes and put it in the right area to spend the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Just like we were talking about, once the uh, income comes down, now they're all of a sudden going to have to be a little more frugal. Yeah. I see yeah. that as a positive. I, 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 like, if I look at New York City holistically, it looks a little bit different, but not so much different. In other words, there's still a hundred, there's still a lot of people here. There's still a lot of people that are renting. So they're doing something. They're probably remaining in their apartment, but they're still here. It's not like 80% vacancy and nothing is trading on the sales. So they're here. I see them shopping. I see them at brunch. I forgot where I was on uh, yesterday. I was at an appointment. I'm like, how are people, so many people at this restaurant right now? It was, that's what it was. I was walking, I was walking to an apport, a, appointment and the whole restaurant was filled. I'm like, what are these people doing during the day? This is the remote work. That's yeah. where they love it. They get to go to brunch on Mondays. Anyway, talking about the state of the February real estate market, listen, I'm, and I'm, a, I'm an optimistic guy. We had a meeting before this and I talked about there's going to be no complaining, no negativity, but I've been, to be honest, very negative the last three years. I take that full responsibility. However, the last two weeks <laughs> have been wild. So I picked up a bunch of buyers and this, there was a couple articles that talked about the outside of New York City and how it stagnated. So this is actually just New York City. So the rest of the country has been on fire for three years. New York City has been all right. The last two weeks, I've worked with a buyer. We looked at 10 properties. Literally, I got back to them between last Thursday and this yesterday, which was Tuesday. So within that time frame, all 10 properties either had a contract out, contract signed, or accepted offer. Huh. So I understand that people are pessimistic about the real estate market in New York City. I, I put this up on, uh, on our company Instagram story, I haven't seen this much activity. There's, there's homes with multiple offers. I haven't seen that since 2018, 2017, 2016. So I'm very optimistic because this is February. It shouldn't be like this in February, maybe April or May or June. But uh, I know you're just re-entering it. What was your thoughts going into this market? Have you heard anything? I've, the sentiment is that it, things are slow, that there's in little, sales? little inventory. There's very little inventory. Uh, there is definitely very little inventory. The rentals have definitely gotten slower. I've noticed that. Um, you know, there's always activity in New York. That's what one of the best things about it. I would have to say that the stock market is going up and interest rates have cooled off. Yeah. So that should produce some buyers. And I think they've just been sitting there yeah. and they've been scared or something for the last couple of years and they're just re-entering the market there's always going to be people who want to take advantage yeah. and that's actually kind of what this good segue is talking about yeah i'm glad we did it in this order falling mortgage rates bring some home buyers back to the market yep the average rate on the 30-year fixed mortgage fell to 6.09 this week the lowest in Say five that again? months the average rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage fell to 6.09 percent this 6 .09, week 6.09 wow the lowest in five months. Yes. Buyers are returning, but experts say the state of the economy will drive the market's next move. Well, you know, pending recession, that's where people yeah. are going to be hesitant. But again, stock market, like is, you said, has a lot to do with that. Yeah. And the stock market yeah. has 
outperformed everybody's expectations yep. for the beginning of this year. Yep. And um, that can only help. So, and it's been a shift because tech stocks have really cooled. Yeah. But a bunch of other sectors, maybe energy has gone up. Um, I know travel has gone up. Uh, hospitality has gone up. Well, and let's say you sell some stocks, where are you going to put the money? Yeah. So now you look at, uh, you know, you, you, it could even be cash deals. Yeah. You go and find some real estate and, you know, that's looking more attractive. I'm going to say as a prediction from what I've seen and being in the business for since 2009, 14 years, is that sales is going to be good. Rentals is going to be cool. And I think the sales is going to be first time home buyers that have been sitting on the sideline. They've been accumulating cash and it's also going to be Pia tears. I don't see a lot of investors. Um, maybe second homes is, I mean, maybe uh, larger apartments, but I see a lot of Pia tears and a lot of uh, first time home buyers. I think because the, the area that we targeted was first time home buyers. This is who I'm working with. And then we're also putting a home on the market. That's probably going to go to a first time home buyer as well. So I think first time home buyers under a million dollars in New York City is going to be good. Yeah. There's right. not enough inventory. Well, and that would Every be buyer has been saying that. The two bedrooms were the hottest after COVID. Uh, yeah. In the I need the, space. Yeah, they needed space. <laughs> now I could see that, especially since when you start going through the rent versus buy. The yep. rents are up, but they're, they're not coming down. They're just going to stay elevated. Yep. So hopefully people have been able to save their money. And then you can start building equity, take advantage of the market, get a good deal, yep. get a good purchase price and it starts making sense on the rent versus buy. But you're right, I've been looking around to just find investment units where if you have a renter, are you gonna cover your costs with the minimum down payment? That isn't there yet. Exactly. So it's right Because at the high the rent, yeah. maybe, well, but back, if the rent's cool. Back in the hottest time of the market, going into 2017, that's how you would determine a rent. Yep. What is the minimum down payment yep. on this to purchase it with the closing costs, et cetera, the abatements did, mess around with those numbers. Yep. But that's how you'd come up with the rental price. Yep. Add a little premium on top of it. Now on those same exact apartments, if you do the math, you're not getting you're you're losing money. Exactly. So exactly. that that'll come around. We'll see. Well, first one of the year. Yeah. And honestly I think those are pretty good predictions. Uh, I, I also listen you know, going into this year, we just had a meeting. It's going to be a very good year for a bunch of agents, and it's not going to be a good year for a lot of agents. And the reason being is that if you got into the market in 2020 or 2021 as a new agent, you have an experience what we're about to experience, which is you got to pick up the phone or you actually got to do some work. So well, the I, experienced yeah. agents are going to take some market share this year, and they're going to be the ones that understand and know how to educate the buyers and sellers. That's exactly right. I mean, yeah. obviously, the experience And look matters. for off-market properties. Last year was pretty down. This yep. year is going to be much more stable. Yep. And uh, it's going to be the cream rises to the top. You have to work with an experienced agent in this type of environment. Yep. Uh, one of the notes I wanted to say, final comment, is that it was a little difficult to find the news. I wrote into Google, you know, searching through the news, like, what's the hot uh, topics? And real estate wasn't really the a topic. topic. It yeah. really wasn't. It was hard to find. I, I found a few, but it was like, it wasn't easy. It wasn't like it usually is. Yeah. And uh, do you think that's because it's not booming in the suburbs? I think because they, the perception is it's slow. And that's yeah. where I thought about it for a second. And it reminded me when you're just talking about making calls and this and that is that we are in a better touch with what's going on yep. in the real estate market than the news. Yep. It's same with when you think about the news with upcoming recession yep. or this and that. The, the talking heads or the people on TV don't know when to call a recession until they've been told it's that so we're in late. a recession. It's so, so late. you could be feeling, yeah. I'm in a recession right now. Yep. Then they come and tell you. So yeah. I would say we're going to have the knowledge on what the state of the real estate market is way before it starts Perfect showing example up on Google. example is what I just said. Yeah. The last two weeks is going to become news in three or four weeks from now, but I noticed it in five days. In five days, 10 apartments, accepted offer, multiple contract or multiple offers in contract. I haven't seen that. My buyer was like, uh, what? Because the perception, like you said, is that it's slow yeah. and that this shouldn't be happening. But this is why you have to work with a professional and understand, do they know what they're talking about? Is it opposite from the news? And they have to explain their position. So that's it for this week. Good week. What episode is it?
we got to be pushing double digits. Oh, we're definitely. Yeah. It's either 11 10? or 12. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, by the time this goes live, you'll already know in the title. <laughs> so there you go. See you next Tuesday and uh, Wednesday. Yeah, next Tuesday. We're going to be live. Talk to you.